An icon of Israel's southern Negev are the Bedouin towns and villages spread throughout the vast desert landscape. One community, however, stand out from the rest. The Falahin settled in Darijat in 1840 moving to the region from South Hebron. Every Israeli thinks that the South is just Bedouin. Whoever lives here is included among the Bedouin. Our religion is the same, but there is a difference in customs and mentality. Once you get to know the area, you can see there are also Felachin here. Unlike Bedouin, the Felachin historically worked in agriculture. Instead of wandering the desert with flocks, they lived in permanent caves while tending the land. Only 100 years ago, this small cave housed both wheat and livestock. Underneath these rocks, you could find 15 sheep, five cows, and one camel, all living alongside the nine members of the Abu Hamad family. Today, the Falahin live in modern homes, but their traditions are fighting to survive. Jaber Abu Hamad was the first in his family to be born in a hospital, and not the family's cave. But as he grew older, he began searching for ways to help the legacy continue. I used to work in hotels, and I'm a tour guide. When I returned to my father's cave, it had been completely neglected. Then I had the idea to create something that would preserve the Felachin culture. So I decided to restore it and bring groups of tourists here. Except Darijat has a major hurdle to overcome before turning into a tourist destination. No electricity. Unlike many of the surrounding Bedouin towns, the village was officially recognized in 2004 by the Israeli government. The change in status typically comes with municipal infrastructure, such as running water, garbage disposal, and being connected to the power grid. 14 years later, and only the school has power. With no signs of the lights being switched on, Jaber's dreams of tourism revenue wait in the dark. We have no electricity. The village was hooked up to water 10 years ago, but we still only have solar energy. It's a lot better than it was before. Despite the fact that the village is recognized, things are progressing very slowly. In the meantime, Jabbar works with the Negev Development Authority to push through the difficult bureaucracy and help attract tourists to the region. For a uh, tourist enterprise, not to have electricity is a big um, barrier for them to develop because if they want to develop any kind of simmers or like accommodation places. So in the summer, it's very hot. You don't have any air con, and that's a very big barrier for somebody like Jaber. So we're trying to help him also in that sense and to keep lobbying, even though I'm funded by the government, but to keep lobbying, lobbying this government and saying them, telling them to, um, to sort this thing out. The development authority says slow progress is being made to set up electricity. But with no deadline, locals have little hope change will come. Jaber and his family still manage to attract Israeli tourists, offering catered evenings in the authentic Falahin Cave. Shelby Weiner, I-24 News.